John Kong Ting's Invest, talk about investing, finance, and professional development for today's items only. The investment talk today would be Thermotech ETH. Sorry for posting a little bit late. It's my second posting as of today. I was just in meetings the whole day. I was um, speaking with reporters, potential investors, um, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm just uh, really winded at the moment. So apologies. But I did watch the uh, FOMC meeting. Uh, earlier today, uh, during my lunch break, I was just uh, munching on a sandwich while uh, watching on my iPhone whilst going between meetings and, and, and stuff like that. So it's been a, just a wild day and really just uh, want to say thank you for all of those that you know gave me the such sweet comments and, and, and notes uh, on my previous video that I posted on my CNBC debut on my life story uh, and the cultivation of Tanks Capital, uh, the venture capital fund that I'm building going forward. So really appreciate you, uh, just is amazing. So just get back to the business. Uh, so with respect to the high level recap on the Fed's uh, Jerome Powell, the FOMC meeting earlier today. So on a high level depictions around it, the synopsis is basically still uh, inconclusive uh, with respect to the tapering going forward, right? So based on the verbiage that we heard from Jerome Powell, which, you know, oftentimes he's diplomatic and he is uh, supposed to be diplomatic. So there's nothing really conclusive or confirmatory with respect to what he's saying so far. But some of the hints that we've heard so far is with respect to the tapering timeline is that he's expected to basically give the formal announcement uh, by the November taper announcement. So that's basically the recap of the speech that we heard but in terms of like uh, some foreshadowing indicator that we've heard is that uh, tapering should technically durate from um, you know the earliest by November or the you know the latest by early next year by Q1 2022 and the tapering plan is going to durate basically from uh, you know that time frame which is basically late Q4 to early Q1, all the way to mid-2022. Uh, and per Jerome Powell, he believes that timing should be appropriate, right? But, you know, ultimately, the great contingency, the great caveat is still going to be contingent on how the economy is going to be progressing, which is the mandate that Jerome has, right? The job numbers that, you know, basically the Fed has given him the assignment to, you know, march towards, right? And that's going to triangulate with the asset purchasing, the $120 billion that we are going to be enduring, you know, for the remaining of the year or possibly even next year, right? And as it pulls back and as we heard that announcement, the U.S. dollar subsequently appreciate. If you look at the Forex, the foreign exchange chart, you'll see that the U.S. dollar spiked. And when that spikes, um, you know, despite the anticipatory pressure that we have seen across the equity market, you could see that there's a slight dip subsequently across the crypto and the equity market because of the slight reversal from the adjustments or the normalization from the initial anticipatory spike that we had, right? So with respect to Ethereum, um, it is uh, currently floating above the $3,000 level, and we know the $3,000 is not really a substantive level. The technical level is really a $2,750, right? And the next level is $3,150. It seems like we were trying to get there today to the $3,081, but subsequently reversed back down. We tested the $2,938 earlier, last, I believe last night and uh, subsequently reverse back up because of this uh, normalization that we saw from the sell-off but the indications from the Fed uh, on the timing of it that is still inconclusive subsequently you know drive some pseudo confidence among public investors to buy back up right so which is the reason why we're seeing some green pr pressure across the spectrum today so seems like the based on the volume is mainly coming from public investors okay so on the MACD perspective, we are forming a slight curvature upward, but not like a severe curvature that we've seen in before, right? There's no indicator of a bullish signal at the moment, despite RSI going back up a little bit. We had the 41.54 in comparison to the level we were at earlier last night at 33.61 when we hit that 2,750. So 2,750 was, again, right, a good exposure level to buy at. You never want to just wait until 2,750 nor 2,450 for you to start incurring, right? Because that's, you know, 
being too static. You need to incur risk for you to risk mitigate and risk manage, right? So with respect to Ethereum, um, I think based on the verbiage that we've heard so far, um, mainly driven by public investors, means that there's more bearishness coming based on how the chart is set up right now. We is we are still within the head and shoulder pattern. Okay, so I think 2750 should be imminent coming, despite the reversal that we have seen today, uh, based on how the chart is set up right now. But we have to really look out for the MACD to see if it's really crossing. If it's crossing, then I'm completely wrong, you know. But I haven't seen anything confirmed yet, so I'll keep an eye out on it to make sure uh, as we progress, right? So Dogecoin, we are reversing, right? Again, if you bought the 20 cents, congratulations to you. Well, 12 point. 16% so far, so really great stuff. Uh, I'm happy for you and congrats to you for your short-term gains so far. And with respect to Cardano, same thing, right? Uh, the $2 is a substantive level in terms of a flat number, but non-substantive in terms of a technical level. The real level is the 187, right? Which we got there in some platform. I believe we got there, but it's not showing or indicating it here. Um, MACD is slowly crossing up, so that's a good sign that... Um, you know, we are leaning more toward a bullishness coming. However, we are, you know, this is kind of like a head and shoulder as well. So something we have to watch out for. The 44.85 is normalizing back up in comparisons to the oversold level. So the right move was really to buy at the $2 mark, which, you know, if you did, congratulations to you. Solano, it is uh, surging because of the fact that we are, you know, it's a lot of uh, positive media affectation. But at the same time, is this a right level right now? I think I wouldn't buy at the moment right now because it's mainly driven by public investors because it's like a popularity contest. We know that Solana is like one of those most popular ones right now. Um, the scale is still 53.98 out of 70. There's no signal on the curvature yet. So Solana should be reversing back down. Today's a relatively um, sharp reversal, mainly driven by public investors. So we see that Solana is one of the most popular uh, investments in the crypto spectrum. XRP um, reversing comparably. Uh, we did the hit the 88 when we were extremely oversold, which we did when we were at the 30, right? We're at the 32 something. And we are not really forming a curvature yet. We are still flatline. So would I be buying now? Um, you know, it's up to your judgment, right? I think the risk profile is okay, it's normalized, but it's not like really, it's not the best. So I'll just wait a little bit for myself. Uh, Polkadot, we are reversing back up because of the popularity contest that we're seeing from the altcoin. Uh, I think the right move yesterday was really to buy at the 25, which is, um, you know, per our technical analysis, what has been has what has occurred in front of our eyes right but if we break that 25 we'll basically go down to the basically you know each of these red candles are basically a pseudo substantive level but the real level bill is really at the ten dollars right so the risk is high we're at the 51.64 we're not really forming a curvature we're actually curving down so polka dot i wouldn't advise buying now or chasing the pump at the moment um, and that's pretty much it overall. So going back to Ethereum, looking at some of the news in the recent time frame. Uh, apologies for my, you know, just speaking slow today. I'm just really tired. I've been talking for, I think, I don't even know. I think I've been talking ever since like 9 a.m. on Eastern time. And it's like 5, 11 p.m. on Eastern time right now. So I'm just dying right now. And I have not really drank any water. I've just been drinking black coffee straight up with my little cup right here. So... I am sweating bullets from caffeine, <laughs> if you may. So some news that we've been hearing so far is, is really just uh, more regurgitation news. Uh, with respect to MarketWatch about five hours ago, talk about you know Robinhood double downs on cryptocurrencies with new wallets offering. So um, this is another reminder on what they're doing in a technological infrastructure perspective. So this is a new product that they're offering to crypto investors. So another great news, I guess. Another one is coming out from um, another Robinhood news. Another regurgitation news of nine hours ago. We'll talk about is this mysterious seventeen million dollars of Ethereum NFT whale actually Snoop Dogg? So this is basically a speculation news. Um, nothing really substantive. We we heard from recently that Snoop Dogg has a relatively sizable collection of seventeen million dollars of NFT artwork, but it seems like. Based on the news on Spazinga, they are adjusting their verbiage a bit. Like they, they say like maybe it's um misrepresent misrepresentation. It's not maybe 
not entirely owned by Snoop Dogg. Maybe it's a um, co-investment pool of people, wealthy people, obviously, investing into NFTs. And that's pretty much it. And then some other news talk about Tom Brady again on his, you know, you know, his uh, proposition to earn part of his salary in Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Solana. So obviously with these affectation drive some buying pressure. So with respect to Ethereum, uh, just to stay within the frame of reference, we are going to see some volatility, right, with respect to the panic and denial stage. I believe, you know, with respect to the anger stage, you know, I think we are in one of the three. I think we're leaning more towards like the early ending of the panic stage or the capitulation stage. We're going to see some oscillation on the sideways fashion, right? And with the volume that we're seeing today is mainly coming from public investors. So that kind of worries me a little bit. Um, so I think worse is still to come based on the way it's uh, being depicted right now. Nothing is really confirmatory with respect to a tapering plan either. It's basically Jerome is basically pushing the time out again, like to November, as a confirmatory announcement. So how do we do this, right? Basically stay within the frame of reference. And apologies again for not correcting the chart. 3,000, 2,007, 2,450 is still within my frame of reference. Like I was not as fortunate as you guys are to buy the frame between these levels, right? I know some people even bought at the 2,650. So that's a really smart idea when we were at the depletion on RSI scale out of 70. I think we were at the 32 out of 70, so great level. But if you want to buy it now because you want to just get rid of that formal feelings, like, you know, that's totally fine, right? Because ultimately, we're going to get to these higher levels, right? So with respect to the next 12 months, 9,800, 3.3 times your money with 20% corporate adoption. Um, and these are not adjusted for the macro news uh, that the Fed and other exogenous factors that we not capture this is just purely based on you know the singular fact of corporate adoption numbers and the burn rate so hopefully this is helpful it's my second update today i'm really really tired i am dying right now but really appreciate you for dropping by and the kind notes again that you've been giving me and stay tuned for the next one up take care bye